Hello, hello. I'm Alex from Super Team. Uh, you may recognize me from Twitter. If not, come talk to me about anything around Solana in the Middle East if you want to come to Dubai, Abu Dhabi, or uh, Saudi Arabia. I'm your guy. How's everyone feeling about the biggest breakpoint yet? Can I get a little bit of energy after all those product talks? <laughs> Great. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm having a blast. Amazing to see everyone uh, here at IRL. Also, very, very excited to introduce our next fireside chat. Uh, so between two titans of our industry, I think everyone knows Visa, I'm sure. Uh, you've probably got one of their cards in your pocket. Uh, and then how many people have heard of Fireblocks, if we're going to get a show of hands? A little bit more uh, if you know, you know, kind of uh, institutional player. But we've got uh, today uh, Kai from Visa, who leads their uh, crypto business. And we've got Goldie from Fireblocks. So please join me. Give them a warm round of applause as they join, join us on stage for uh, what is, I'm sure, going to be a very interesting fireside chat. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone. Uh, I'm going to sit down in a second. You can sit down. But uh, first of all, I don't know if you've noticed, I'm wearing a stable coin is, is bigger and better than fiat. Do you agree? <laughs> all right. Perfect. This is a great segue. So, so my name is Goldie. I manage the payments division in Fireblocks. Uh, and if you don't know us, we're probably one of the largest platforms out there for anyone who's building digital assets. Uh, but today, more important than Fireblocks, we have uh, a legend with us. So uh, I know, don't be embarrassed, but uh, if you don't know Kai, I'll give you a really brief intro about him. Uh, so Kai Sheffield joined Visa in 2015 through the acquisition of a company he was part of called TrialPay. Now Kai could have sat in Visa, rest and vest, you know, get his, get his great equity from Visa, but actually no, he decided he's learning a lot about payments at Visa, but he was also super curious about crypto. And he noticed that the people in Visa that knows a lot about payments have no idea what are, all of us are doing in crypto. So he became this amazing bridge at Visa. And he was so good at it that he actually created Visa Crypto, with his, obviously with his colleagues. And today, they're probably the largest uh, entity out there that you, know, you would probably, we all call them the incumbents that are doing crypto. So please, give another round of applause for Kai Sheffield. Thank you, Kai. Thank you. It's great to be here. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and, and Kai, you know, the, the first thing, and I'm going to talk faster because we don't have a lot of time, but Kai, you know, I'm sure that, you know, your, your family was super proud of you when, when a company you were part of was acquired, you became part of Visa, you led, you're leading a team, but did you tell your parents you're doing crypto? How did they feel about this? I, I did, and, uh. and surprisingly, they loved it. Like, I got my dad down the rabbit hole, and so he's a huge supporter, which is amazing. Amazing. And, and, and I think the first thing I want to ask you, like, you know, Visa, everyone thinks of Visa as, as you know, it, it, it's all about cards. And, and I think when d -Hawk, you know, the original founder of Visa, th did he think that we'll be here in a Solana conference talking about crypto? Yeah. I, I think that he did. I mean, I think Visa's got one of the most amazing corporate histories. If you're not familiar with d -Hawk, in the early days, you know, the Fresno airdrop, you know, I think when, when Visa was created, it, it wasn't designed, wasn't set up to be a credit card company. You know, d -Hawk talked about in the 70s, you know, that the future would have electronic value exchange, that money would move across the world, you know, instantly at the speed of light. Uh, and so I think in many ways, you know, Visa's pioneered, you know, wave after wave of digital payments, and I think crypto is just, you know, the next wave and, and one part of that that we're excited to participate in. Amazing. And, and this is a great segue because we were talking, you know, we're here at Token, right? And, and you and I, we know each other for probably like six years now. Uh, we, we've been to a lot of crypto conferences. Me personally, again, managing the payments part in Fireblocks, I see hundreds of payment companies. And over the last week only, I've heard probably like, I don't know, a dozen pitches on half of them are how we're going to disintermediate Visa. And and, and yet, you're here. Visa is doing crypto. Are you guys doing this as a hedge, or do you really believe this is the future of payments? We, we see it as a huge opportunity, and we think about it in a few ways. 
you know, one, like we see more and more demand for stable coins you know, all over the world. Uh, but if stable coins are going to move from just a store of value that people are using to get access to dollars uh, to actually being able to be spent and have utility, you need to have merchant acceptance. Uh, we think it's going to be a, a long time you know, to get 100 million plus merchants across the world you know, to update point of sales, you know, to figure out you know, how to manage acceptance. Uh, and so we think one of the, the, the biggest opportunities is linking a Visa credential, working with the next generation of stablecoin wallets, and making it as easy as possible to tap to pay with Visa, spending from a balance of stablecoins. And so we've got a bunch of amazing partners that we've been working closely with. And then the other way that we think about it is we care a lot about many different payment flows. And so we don't just think about consumer to merchant. You know, we think about B2B. We think about P2P. You know, how do businesses do disbursements to consumers? And so I think it's a lot of those new payment flows that are really challenging, particularly cross-border, that we think there's a huge opportunity for blockchains and stablecoins you know, to become a new payment rail. And so we're really focused on you know, how can Visa be this connection point for our clients, enabling them to move value over existing payment rails today and new rails that emerge in the future. And particularly as the speed and scalability of networks like Solana has emerged, we think there are more and more things that you can do on chain uh, with payments and more payment flows uh, that that starts to open up. And so we're really excited. A lot of the growth of Visa, it's not just going to be consumer to merchant, and stablecoins fit into a lot of it. OK, so, so that actually touches on the use cases. And, and I want to double click on that, because you know, a lot of people think that, oh, uh, when you say payments with blockchain, it's just, I don't know, it's just people paying with Bitcoin or whatnot. Obviously, that's not what it is, right? Because, uh, and I'm happy to share from, from Fireblocks, out of the 200 companies that we have doing payments, uh, I think, again, out of the $20 billion a month they're doing, I think more than half of that is, is cross-border, what we call the, uh, the stablecoin sandwich, right? When it starts with fiat, goes to stablecoin, moves back to fiat. Uh, you at Visa, and again, this is one of the things that I really admire about you guys doing, is that you created an on-chain dashboard. You recently had this survey that you released like a week ago about emerging markets. Can you share from this dashboard, from the survey, what are like the top insights that you saw that we need to think about as like emerging use cases and most, you know, the most interesting ones? Yeah, so we, we've been doing a lot of research and analysis, and, and one of our goals is you know, we work with 15,000 financial institutions across the world. You know, this space is new to many of them. And so we're trying to help them understand that stable coins are real, they're here to stay, and how are they being used? Uh, so we've spent a lot of time looking at on-chain data. We've had some amazing partners, you know, Allium Labs. You know, we worked together and put up a dashboard at visaonchainanalytics.com. And we're really starting to see different payment behavior based upon the chain, based upon the stable coin. You know, for example, you know, with Solana, you know, we've seen about you know, 65% of stablecoin transactions in Solana are actually under $100. Hmm. And so it's you know, happening a lot kind of lower value transactions more frequently, where Ethereum, it's just not cost effective you know, to be able to do that. And so we've been following these trends on the on-chain data side very closely, putting the dashboard up as a public resource for the industry, for policymakers. And then we've been talking to customers. Uh, so we did a survey, talked to customers in Nigeria and in India and in Indonesia, uh, and we found that you know, over half you know, of these customers are planning to increase the stablecoin usage you know, going forward. And so there's more and more demand, and we've particularly seen markets like Nigeria that Solana is getting more and more penetration in. You know, there were about 40% of the customers we talked to, they were using the Phantom wallet. Uh, and so we've seen you know, the opportunity in emerging markets is very real today. Uh, we're excited to figure out you know, how can we partner with the companies building that space and help enable them to grow. And, and is a lot of that on the consumer side? If, again, if you look at all the insights that you guys have, is it more on the consumer side? Is it more the B2B that are starting with fiat and, but ending with a digital asset and settling like commodities? Is it the stablecoin sandwich? Where, where do you see the meat on the bone today? Yeah, I, I think it's both. I think what's exciting, you know, 2024 has been kind of a turning point year where we started to see some of the first non-crypto businesses. You know, they have nothing to do with crypto, but they're, they have challenging you know, payout problems that they're trying to solve. And right. so they want to do disbursements to freelancers. That's one of the biggest use cases that we see over and over of freelancers in Nigeria, in Argentina. You know, they want to get paid, and it's, they prefer dollars. And so stable coins are becoming faster, cheaper ways for global companies to pay freelancers you know, in those markets. And then you know, I got to give you credit. You coined the stable coin sandwich over a year ago, and we've seen that more and more where 
you know, a lot of the payment volume across the world, it's happening from one bank account to another bank account. And so the question is, can stable coins become a back-end payment rail? Can you stitch together stable coins for cross-border with local domestic RTP rails? You know, PIX in Brazil, for example. And can you create these experiences where a business or a consumer sends dollars in the US, it lands as pesos in Mexico, but it uses a stable coin on the back end to do the cross-border leg? And, and we think that's a huge opportunity to modernize account-to-account -account cross border payments. No, I, I agree. And I see a lot of companies starting to do this. And, and I guess the other thing that a lot of companies are doing now, and I don't know, maybe by a show of hands, uh, half of the people now here are issuing new stable coins, right? Right. Uh, now, uh, and again, you all know Tether is at, uh, I, I think, 130 billion, USDC is at 35 billion, and yet every day I open the news, I see a new stable coin. Uh, do we need all these stable coins? Or is, is, do we ha are we going to see a future with 100 USD, uh, you know, pe pegged stable coins? Yeah, I, I think it's exciting to see more stablecoins coming to market, experimenting, trying to differentiate in different ways. You know, it seems like today, most of the use cases, you know, people are explicitly using the stablecoin. They know what the stablecoin is. There is some direct-to-consumer brand, whether it's USDC or USDT. But we think there are many other use cases that could just happen on the back end where the brand doesn't matter. And then it's all about you know, the economics. It's, it's the features of how the stablecoin works. And so you could have many different stablecoins that are used on the back end of wallets, but the consumer doesn't have to have any association with the brand. And then a handful of large stablecoins that have kind of broken through as the brand that people use interoperating you know, between these wallets. I think we're also excited to see non-dollar stablecoins. You know, right now it's 99% right. you know, of the, the total supply, they're dollars. And we think that there will be every major fiat currency represented on chain. And a lot of the payment use cases, you know, dollars are great for cross-border, but then you need to be able to convert quickly and efficiently. And there's a big role for other local currency stablecoins to play in that. I think that that's going to grow over the next few years. No, I, I completely agree. And, and again, the way we look at, at, at Fireblocks is, you know, we really believe that we're at this inflection point right now. And, and what we see is that we're at this I guess, phase where we're moving from sporadic exploration to massive experimentation, right? Even just looking at the, what we're seeing in the market, three years ago, we had 10 payment companies doing something on blockchain. Today, we have the 200 companies doing something on blockchain. It's, it's, it's a big shift, right? Uh, I hope that, I don't know, how many PSPs, how many banks you work with, more than 15,000, if I remember correctly, I hope we see all of them coming online in the next five years, right? Um, we're, we're, we don't have a lot of time today, unfortunately. So I'm going to do uh, something that I'm, I'm sorry if I haven't prepped you for this, but, uh, <laughs> because you know Visa obviously asked me to send all the questions ahead of time, but I couldn't send this one. Uh, but uh, so this is going to be a quick fire, rapid. I'm going to say a term. You're going to say first thing that comes to mind. Okay. 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 And I'm sorry, Visa. I apologize. <laughs> um, so Bitcoin, digital gold, stable coins. Uh, future of payments. MasterCard. Sorry, scratch that. Um, a AI and blockchain. I know I said both of them together. Uh, I'm actually excited about the intersection. I think you know, how AI agents are empowered to spend, I think, is a fascinating area. Still very early, uh, but I think there are a lot of you know, cool things coming out of it. Solana ecosystem. It's an amazing ecosystem. I think you know, the number of developers that we're talking to, you know, building products that you know, they're not crypto products. They're not you know, focused on someone that you know, is just you know, looking to speculate and trade. They look and feel like the next generation of fintech uh, where you know, a mainstream consumer can make payments, you know, can store value. Uh, and I think we're seeing more and more of that coming out of the Solana ecosystem and looking to support and work with as many companies in, in the space as we can. And, and having only, only about two minutes left, um, Visa Crypto is not just about stable coins. It's also about tokenization of real world assets. It's also about everything else we're doing. And you know, I don't know if you guys, you know, you, the previous person uh, was talking about PayFi and, and, and credit. That's also something that I'm sure you guys are exploring. Out, uh, between payments, tokenization, uh, and, and again, the other things we can do with this new infrastructure, what is the best thing that you think that, that we all should focus here? Yeah, I, I think right now, one of the roles that we're looking to, to play is you know, 
we spent a lot of time you know, working with crypto companies trying to bring Visa's products and services you know, into the industry and then you know, adapting them, you know, making them you know, more flexible. You know, looking at, we're settling with USDC on Solana today with a handful of partners and looking to grow that you know, significantly. And then we're trying to really you know, help enable and empower banks. Uh, and again, that's, that's really been the core business that Visa's been in. You know, we think that banks you know, have to play a major role you know, in any financial ecosystem and there's fundamental value in blockchain technology. And so we're trying to say, how do we take examples of you know, what's working on the frontier you know, in DeFi, you know, in FinTech and crypto, and then make that accessible and find ways that banks can participate in it. Uh, and so we want to be that enabler and really bringing banks you know, on chain. Uh, and so we're really excited to you know, find partners and look at you know, opportunities to take things that have worked in crypto and figure out how do you professionalize, institutionalize it, and get it to the point where you can have you know, much, much larger financial institutions that could start to use the same infrastructure. Kai, I, I really appreciate that y you had uh, uh, the brave to come here uh, on stage for this fireside chat, and I really appreciate the fact that we can have a conversation where we're talking about Bitcoin decentralization and banks at the same time, and for you being that bridge, uh, thank you for everything that you guys are doing at, at Visa Crypto promoting this. And thank you, amazing builders. I, will, I, I was Goldie from Fireblocks. And please, enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you, Kai. Thanks for having me. All right. If you're getting up, that's the right thing to do because it's time to eat. You're in Singapore a place known for its culinary traditions, amazing food. So we've got a ton of hawker stalls set up just outside here. But don't stay too long. I need you back here at 2.20 p.m. Uh, for a very, very interesting debate. You don't want to miss it. So you've got roughly 40 minutes. See you back here, 2.20 p.m. See you. <laughs>